Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Friday morning trading room. I'm so sorry about the delay here. I've been fighting with the computer. <laughs> uh, technology. All right, one second here. Today is our rabbit hole Friday. I know we didn't do one last week, so we're going to do one this week. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to get the screen share to work. Okay, and my charts are still booting a bit. Uh, reminder, no trading room next week. I'm going to be out of town until around the middle of the week, so... Uh, We may as well just enjoy the week off. All right, while the charts are finishing booting, uh, like I said, today is our Rabbit Hole Friday. And on Rabbit Hole Fridays, we, we explore other indicators and other ways of looking at the market. You know, really mess you up. <laughs> um, Today, I thought we would take a closer look at one of the volume indicators. What's interesting is that uh, in spite of everybody recognizing how important volume is to price, very few people actually consider volume in their trading. And I think that's because volume itself is a fairly difficult indicator to interpret. And as soon as the, I don't think I can move my charts yet without messing stuff up, or can I? Oh, I can, okay. So here is your daily NASDAQ chart. And you can see at the bottom, of the chart, I like to keep track of the volume. Why? Well, because volume is perhaps the only leading indicator. Yes, you heard correct. Most indicators, perhaps 99% of all indicators are lagging indicators. They will take a look at what's been happening over the last X number of bars, whether it's 10 or 14 or 20 or whatever value you plug in. And there we go. And then they will plot their whatever their indicator is. Volume, on the other hand, it actually will show you what the market is likely to do if you know how to read it. Now, volume, as you can see, being the, oops, being the histogram that you see down here is not the easiest of indicators to interpret. It's totally relative to what's been going on before. Uh, volume increases as the contract month matures and then will decrease as it nears expiration. So you have all these variables to consider. So to that end, some traders took it upon themselves to play with uh, different volume style indicators. And one of the first of these was called on balance volume or OBV. Now, the nice thing about on balance volume is that it does not plot according to a certain prescribed period. So in other words, we're not looking back 14 days or 20 days or 50 days. It takes volume as it is 
and we'll plot it on the chart. What on balance volume will do is it plots all the volume for the day either positively or negatively according to the close. That's an important thing to remember with on balance volume. It plots according to the close. So simply put, if volume is decreasing, or pardon me, if prices are decreasing, volume or on balance volume is decreasing. If prices are increasing, you know, the close of each day is getting higher, then on balance volume is also increasing. So a very simplistic way of looking at the market, but actually very ingenious as well because in a way it makes sense you know if the day was overly bullish then you can probably assume that most of that volume was bullish volume and if the day was overly bearish then you can probably assume that most of the volume on that day was bearish and just a very simplified version you take the all the volume on the day, if it's a bearish bar and you just assume all that volume was bearish and if it was a bullish bar, you assume all that volume was bullish. Now, there have been variations made to on balance volume. And, uh, you know, computers being what they are, you can get pretty sophisticated with this stuff and they all have their advantages. But really, you know, something as simplistic as on balance volume still works pretty good. All right, let's see if I can show you some ways that on balance volume can kind of give you a heads up to what the market might be doing next. Okay, uh, with OBV, you want to pay particular attention to these peaks and valleys where the market tends to turn. And because it's a relative indicator, or pardon me, yes, because it's a relative indicator, you can very often get a good idea of what the market will do. Okay, I'm just trying to find a good spot here. All right, let, let's go with this one right here. Okay, remember that on balance volume plots on the close. So we want to pay particular attention to the closing price. So this little pivot right down here this little pivot right down here coincides with this little, the close of that little bar right there so we're going to throw a little line right across there okay so the market goes up it comes back down you know let's do it like this it comes back down and now all of a sudden we're in that same neighborhood aren't we we're in that same area where we made this last little support pivot and what happens the next day is the market recovers a little bit which is not that unusual but now the big question is is this recovery going to be substantial or not well, notice that how much lower prices got relative to this point right here, right? That's that's quite a bit. They were trading at 7,500. They got almost all the way down to 7,200, and then they put on the brakes. But volume did not go lower, did it? Hmm. You would expect that as prices went lower, volume should go lower but in this case it did not it actually held up at the same level that's actually kind of bullish so even though the market uh, extended lower volume did not follow through on that and as such you would expect a rally at this point now depending how aggressive you want to be on the signal you could even start to look to buy on the close 
and you can see that, well, at least for the short term, we had a pretty decent little rally. So that's a very simplified yet very effective way of using on balance volume. Another simple thing you can do is simply draw trend lines to match price trend lines. Right, so volume is increasing, price is increasing. Volume breaks down at this point right here. And notice it broke down. See the corresponding price bar up above? Volume broke down actually a couple of days before the market fell lower. And you can do the same thing with your if the market's making a horizontal channel, which we'll look at in a moment, but here, let's take a look at this. So here, prices are going down. Volume is going down. All of a sudden, volume breaches at this point right here. And again, well, I guess it breached a day before the initial breakout or at least tested, the breach, I guess, came right there. But again, like I say, volume is a leading indicator. It can actually tell you what the market is inclined to do before uh, prices do, before there's a follow through on price. Just out of curiosity, let's see how this point here compares to other points. Okay, so we have, there's our pivot there. All right, well, it was at least holding. Remember, this is based on the closing price. So the closing price was actually up here. The closing price technically was a little bit higher. So when the market traded down here, we're retesting the volume from this zone right here. And then the next day we bounce back. So again, you know, maybe an early indication that the market is going to try to recover. We've got the little trend line here. We could perhaps wait for the trend line break. Okay, there's the trend line break. We're still bullish. Now we have our excuse to buy. And you're gonna see this happen time and again. It's actually, like I said, a pretty effective little indicator in that respect. And of course you can do the same thing on the uh, resistance side. It's not just for support. You can look at the resistance as well. So for instance, we have these peaks back here and those peaks formed on which close. Well, let's take that one and that one. Okay. So they're about the same. Okay, so there are the highs that formed these peaks, and yet we, we come back, we're trading higher, but volume's not higher. Hmm, that's not right. And you know, we could have our, our trend line here as well. So let's play this forward as though it were happening real time. So we're trading higher. Volume is not as high as it was the last time we were here. So there, there's a little bit of a concern, kind of running on vapors. Okay, we're up here. We're looking for a break in volume as prices go higher. And no, it's not there. What's going on? Okay, they're going to bounce off the trend line and go higher with the volume. Okay, there's the trend line bounce, very good. Let's get the follow through. Oh, there's no follow through. In fact, we are starting to see a, a trend line break. Hmm, maybe one more chance. Oh dear. No, the volume is not there to support the rally. 
we should perhaps look for an opportunity to short. And then you get that kind of stuff. All right, now I, I've i never tried it on one of our uh, mean Renko bars. So let's see how it plays out on the mean Renkos. We'll, we'll pick on the Raptor. And we'll throw a little on balance volume line in here. Okay, I'm just going to bump a few of these things down. We'll remove the Bollingers for the moment. All right, so let's see what happens. So there's our trend line with our volume. And we got a little bit of a bullish break right here. Oh, first, here, before we do trend lines, let's see if we can compare uh, swing points. See if I can find one that's stalled. <clears throat> okay, here's one. Oops. Oh, sorry. Huh. Push the wrong button. Okay, let's try that one. All right, so we've got the the valleys, this little support. occurring right here on the close of that bar. All right, so this coincides with this. And let's see, we come back here and, oh, volume actually went lower, but prices did not. That actually suggested bearishness. Look at this volume falling off dramatically and prices are still holding. All right. Hmm. Maybe before we go to the Raptor, let's try it on the Eagle first. And we got the market falling out of bed here this morning. Unequal catch up. All right, so let's compare some of these swing highs to see if the 
if the market's going to overshoot. So we've got We've got this swing high back here, which is the same as that one right there. All right, well, this one's a little bit of an indication. So we've we've got the market bouncing off of, it looks like around 76, 72, give or take, just off the market open. So it hits it, comes down, hits it, comes down, hits it, comes down hits it again but the whole time volume is decreasing every time it gets up there volume is heading lower right your on balance volume is falling off it's not getting stronger or here was a little bit of a, a breakout that it was nowhere near the volume the last time it was up at those prices and so from there, boom, down she goes. Well, what time is it? Oh, I guess we're only a half hour into the session, that's why. Let's go back here to yesterday. Well, yesterday's session looking <coughs> very much like today's. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, that's pre-market. There is the market open. Okay, here is a peak. And that corresponds with that one right there. Well, here's an, another one that's showing a little bit of exhaustion, but in a different way. We're having uh, divergence between price and the indicator. So the market tops out here off of the open. Volume peaks, comes down. Volume comes back up. But it's nowhere near where it was. Prices are nowhere near where they were. And then we see a rather dramatic decline. All right, I think I'm going to have to go back one more day. Because the last couple of days. Stop it. All right, there's the market open. Okay, well, this is, this might work. So here we have prices bottoming out, and that sort of coincides with this zone right here. I think technically it's... Where did that one stop? Right there. Technically it's this one right here. And that coincides with that price right there. That's the close of this bar. Oh, okay, the close of that bar actually made the lower peak. Or the lower trough, I guess. Okay, so volume maxed out to the short side on this bar right here, on that close. And we're, we come back to this volume area. Prices are... Hmm still fairly bearish we're getting a, a red bar sell or our uh, crossover signal or trend change signal 
Oh, volume is decreasing. Okay, so volume again leading. Did you notice that? See how volume is already below this support level? Even though prices are not. So volume is actually leading the market lower. So off that signal, I think you got enough. Did you get enough to get your profit target? So let's see, we will call it 77.49. We need a 39. Well, yeah, you got it. Okay, let's see what happens after that. If it... Okay, so it may be that with the faster bars, we need to have a pay attention to the, the smaller moves. So we had this little valley form here that coincided with that price is bounced off of that. And the volume, again, a little bit ahead of the curve. Let's see how this plays out with a trend line. Okay, so the volume breaking the trend line. And let's see what happens with prices. Oh, and prices continue higher from there. All right, so with the mean Renko bars, because they form faster than a time-based bar, um, you may have to look at these little shorter swings, stuff like, like this type of thing. which coincides with this down here. Okay, let's take it to the current market and see what's going on there. Okay, so we have, we know we have bearish volume bottoming out right here. And that coincides with this bar right there. And I suppose we could even, if the market's going to remain in an uptrend, this is what our trend line should look like. Oops, stop that. We have a little bit of bullish volume right here. I'm going to have to change my line colors because things look like they can get a little confusing. All these white lines. Okay, and that coincides with this zone right here. Okay, so prices have breached. Volume has breached. That would look a little bit bullish, wouldn't it? Oh, let's see what it is up here now because we're challenging these highs. Aha, uh -huh. that in turn is bearish. Okay, volume is up. There it is. Okay, so if we took a look to buy, oop, I got rid of my. <laughs> there you are. All right, so we've got a hard edge bounce. Okay, now we've actually got the volume falling off here short term. See, we've got this peak. Prices are making the same peaks, yet volume is making lower peaks. 
in fact, you could even call this a little bit of a sideways range and trade it the same way. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. We're starting to get the breakdown. Yeah, I think the key to using it with the mean Renkos is going to be adopting, um, you know, looking at these more frequent bars rather than looking further back. Looking further back works great for the daily chart. And maybe you even want to try it, say, on like a five minute chart. That might be helpful. Okay, notice. The volume broke the trend line, so let's just short it. Let's just sell the market. And we've got our profit target down here, but let's just see how this plays out as volume gets back to this level right here where it was supported previously okay there's a little bit of a bounce Curtis, I'm going to get to your question here in just a moment. Okay, at this point, I'm going to roll my stops because we're struggling with this, this little zone right here. Okay, so here we are. We're right back at that same support level with the same volume. Let's see if we can get through. There we go. Just going to pull this out of the way a little bit more. Well, actually, I'll just cancel it. All right. Now, at this point, it would probably be worthwhile to go back in your chart a little bit and say, okay, where was the, where was a major swing point? Well, there was one right here. Ah, uh -huh. and now we, oh, I got to, didn't highlight my, volume for that line there we go okay and uh are we bouncing on it yes we are so we're bouncing at that same level so it might have been advisable to bring my stops in or perhaps even set a profit target at that point but at the very least i think we should start to squeeze this trade pretty hard there we go all right it was a a little clunky compared to using it on a time-based chart but it was still kind of effective wasn't it and the reason i got my stops in quickly as well as we kind of broke that trend line All right, uh, Curtis is asking, there are green and magenta lines on the chart. Do they represent the parabolic SAR levels? No, these are actually uh, ATR, average true range. And they are part of the, the eagle now. Uh, if you don't have them, you can go to the members area and download them for your eagle chart and if you have trouble with that um, please uh, contact ben directly at support at indicatorwarehouse.com and i'll put that in the window for everyone all right let's try this again on the on the raptor let's see if i can make it work on the raptor And then we'll close things out by looking at a maybe a five minute chart.
Okay. So what we want to pay attention to is we want to pay, oops, let's get back to the current prices. What we want to pay attention to are the relative swing points. So we have a swing down here. And I think it's time to change this color to something. Oh, we already got a lot of blue here. I want to make it easy for you to see as well. Ah, nuts. All right, we'll just leave it as it is for now. Okay, so we've got... We've <laughs> We're moving rather quickly. Okay, so we've got a swing point back here that coincides with that. We are way up here. Volume, is it going to follow through? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's take a look at buying in here because volume is moving, moving higher. Well, that was pretty quick. Market not wasting any time getting to the profit target. Okay, now we've got a little hesitation though. We've got these two levels. We've got this level right here and this level right here, both of them holding up at the resistance zone. We'll go with the higher one. Ooh, that's significant. Volume falling off. Okay, so we've got a couple of trend lines going. We've got this one, and we have this one. And those are their counterparts. Okay, so prices were at this level. <laughs> got to be fast here. Prices were at this level. Oh, look, they're being rejected. Volume's not there. So let's consider a short. There's a sell signal. Let's see if the market tries to go lower. We got our number two signal and Come on, you can do it. Yay. Well, that worked out pretty well. You really, you got to be quick with the, with the Raptor, especially if the market's brisk like this. You can see how quickly the bars unfold. Of course, you can always make a larger raptor chart as well got to remember to clear all my orders off the off the chart okay um let's take a look now at a five minute chart we've done it on the daily uh, we've done it on the eagle and the raptor let's take a look at what it would look like if we were doing say a five minute chart just for an easier reference something we don't necessarily have to run around really quick and analyze oh that's all pre-market what data do i have Oh, interest rates. That's not what I want. You could do the 24 hours as well. If you wanted, you could do the 24 five. All right. So let's see what we got going on here. We had it looks like this close uh, coincides with this uh, 
uh, trough, this dip. We're back down here today. Prices went lower, but volume did not. Hmm, that seems bullish, doesn't it? Okay, well, that's a, a helpful tidbit. Now we've got a little peak right here, and that coincides with this price, the close of that bar right there. And that little swing right here. Okay, so prices are higher at the moment than they were here, but currently volume is not. Uh, how much time do we have? Okay, we got a couple more minutes for this bar to form. I could also turn this on so that we can see the volume, because volume is current, right? It's not going to reverse, so we may as well have volume forming or the indicator forming as the bar progresses rather than wait. Okay, we can see that the volume, in fact, is supporting the breakout, which is also bullish. The next peak is back here, and that's going to coincide with this little itty-bitty bar right here. Okay, so volume is back or nearly back where it was when prices were up here, but prices aren't there. Prices are still lagging. And, okay, yeah, the bar's finished, okay. So here we go, There. see if the buyers will be stronger. See, the thing with volume is price will not move without volume. You need the volume to move the price. Okay, so volume's back where it was, prices are not. Ooh, oh, did you see that? They flinched there quite a bit. Let's see, because remember, as soon as the bar turns bearish, all the volume on that bar becomes bearish. That's how on balance volume works. It takes the balance of the volume and prescribes it either bullishly or bearishly.
And I suppose we can draw ourselves a little trend line here as well, seeing how we have a couple points. And these would be the corresponding points on the price chart. Phil, a uh, great question. Phil asks, it shows a negative decreasing volume. Does that imply price increasing? Uh, no. No, if volume is decreasing, that means all the volume, according to the indicator, is given to bearish bars. You can see we're actually negative here right now. So that means on balance, there was more negative volume than bullish volume, meaning that prices were heading lower. See, volume is up, and yet we're not at the same price where we were before. You would think if the buyers were strong enough to get the, the volume back to this point where we're at right now, that prices should be trading somewhere around 77.10. Okay, so that bar closed. Volume's about to breach the trend line. See, we could, depending how aggressive you want to be here, you could short. You could short this already because volume turned, right? It should have been up here. Price should have been up here, but it wasn't, came up short. And now it looks as though prices may actually head lower for a little bit. Okay, so it's maybe a little bit easier to deal with on a five-minute chart. Let's see again what's going on here on our other charts. Oh, see the Raptor giving us a slightly different picture. We've got the support at this low right here. So prices went lower, but volume did not. Right. We're always looking for confirmation. If volume go, if prices go lower, volume needs to go lower. Otherwise, that would uh, turn out to be bullish, which is probably why we're getting that little bit of a pushback. So this low right here coincides with that bar right there, the low of that bar. And this peak coincides with this high right here. Okay, prices are lower, but volume is not. Uh, the, again, the five minute chart giving us a slightly different look. Okay, volume again, bouncing prices are are lower than they were here, but the volume is holding. Okay, we broke through. I'm gonna to look to buy. And 
see if we get, we're just looking for a little short term move. Or I'm just looking for a little short term move. This peak right here coincides with that right there. Okay, volume is at least up a little bit at this point. Oh, there we go. sorry. Got it, Eric. There we go. Oh, see, we're flinching again. But volume was a little bit stronger, so I'd be looking for a little bit of follow through and get my stops up now. Ah, see, we're back at these same prices. Volume is not there. There's no buying support for this rally. Oh, they're kissing the profit target. Come on, you can give it to me. Yeah, they're not going to. All right, I know it can be a little bit confusing because you're always trying to keep track of where volume is relative to price. And as you can see, sometimes with the mean wrinkle bars, it can unfold a little bit quickly. But what you're looking for is confirmation. You're looking for confluence. If prices are going higher, volume should be going higher. If prices are going lower, volume should be going lower. Oh, on the indicator, on the on balance volume indicator. Now that's it, that's entirely different than your volume histogram. All right, let's not confuse the two. And then you want to pay attention to your peaks and valleys and the prices that they are correlated with. See, so we have this price right here and this price right here, and they correspond with these points right here. So now we'll see if we get a breakout. Okay, we're there. Is it going to be, this is why the test retest idea works as well. Okay, there's the breakout. Is a volume going to break out? Prices are trying to go higher. Volume should be going higher. No. See? Okay, so now they're going to... Oh, are they going to try again? Okay, prices are up. Volume is down relatively speaking. So let's take a look at selling the next sh signal to short. Here's the breakout and the retest, by the way. Oh, where's my short signal? I don't even want to try to put this on uh, the hawk. <laughs> okay, so we have a, another valley, this one right here, and that corresponds with that right here. Once again, <clears throat> pardon me, volume flinching. Okay, 
so now we're higher. Now we can look to buy because we're higher relative to these swings here. There should be a, a little bit of follow through on this. Ugh, they keep crashing. See, so this peak corresponded with this high. We're higher in price. Come on, volume, get through this time. There we go. Hooray. Sometimes you need to anticipate as well. I know that's not always easy, especially when you're wrong. <laughs> Anticipating the market is going to do one thing or another, but that's why we have our high probability signals. That's why we have our trading bands. Um, like I said, it'll probably take a little bit of practice. Um, but you can see it's a, a very interesting and helpful indicator because like I said, volume, volume is the only or one of the only leading indicators where volume not only supports price, but you need volume to, um, to lead price. Uh, Phil, a couple more questions here. Yes, Phil asks, increasing negative volume goes lower. Yes, because remember how the indicator plots. If the bar finishes, here, let's look at it on a time-based chart. It might be easier to understand. If the bar finishes bullish, See how the bar is bullish right now? All the volume, it will be bullish. If the bar finishes bearish, all the volume on that bar will be bearish. So, Again, on balance means that it takes all the volume on that session and then will either make it bullish or bearish depending how the market closed on that particular day or that particular bar. And yes, Phil, the sessions are recorded. You'll find them at the Indicator Warehouse YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube, type in Indicator Warehouse, subscribe to the channel, make a note of the date, August 23rd. You can bookmark it or, or do whatever you need to do to find it. Uh, you can see, you know, very often it's a challenge trying to figure out how we're going to run out a trade, whether we're going to have um, a trailing stop or take profit on target. So long as the volume is increasing, you know, the price will be increasing. And here, before we close out today, here we are on our five minute chart. And remember we were looking at this peak right here relative to this peak right here. Okay, well, prices are higher, volume is not.
when you look at this little valley back here, that little valley corresponded with this bar right here. And the market made a higher valley corresponding with that one right there. Okay, so that's all, all good. And another minute or so for this bar to finish. little volume trend line there as well. So the next peak will be right here and that corresponds with because it's a bullish peak it corresponds with that bar right there. Okay so prices are up, volume is up, that's good. That's what we want to see. compare the, the raptor and the eagle. With our uh, five minute chart. Okay, so the Raptor has volume support right here, and that coincides with this level right here. And now it looks like we're getting a volume support here, same price. Let's see if the volume holds. Oh, it does. Okay, so where's my next buy signal? Prices tried to go lower, but volume did not. Well, it's still looking fairly bullish right now.
Okay, well now prices are lower and volume is lower. So here now our new support zone. And this will be our resistance zone. And that would correspond with these prices right here. Looks like volume keeps confirming each breakout lower, so we're probably going to see the market slip a little bit here to the short side. This big one back here. going to be a little problematic I think right because prices are much lower than they were back here well okay not much lower but they're lower than they were back here and yet the volume was more bearish back here see the volume is not as as uh, bearish as it was which is another way of saying it could be bullish. And here now comes the hard edge bounce. Well, it looks like volume playing a little bit of catch up here now. And actually confirming the move lower. All right. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, like I said, I know it can be a little bit confusing because things unwind so quickly, but it's something that, um, you, you know, you might want to uh, play with, <laughs> see where it takes you. All right, everyone, have a uh, have a good week off. I will see you the following week. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now.